Hello, 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 Katamari Damashi. God damn it, what have I gotten myself into today? Have you ever wanted to do drugs, but you can't find out if they're keto-friendly? Well, basically, Katamari Damashi is the next best thing to acid. Case in point, and please excuse my French, but what in the figgity fuck is happening right here? So what is Katamari Damashi, you ask? Well, you basically play world-renowned kitty snatcher, prince of all of space and time, who is currently about five centimeters tall, and your goal is to collect a bunch of shit from Earth that humans don't use anymore, such as, like, dogs, cats, um, trees, houses. And the reason why you're collecting all of this stuff on your sticky ball is because your dad, who is the king of all of space and time, accidentally got drunk one night and blew up all the stars. Dum, 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 dum. You could always guarantee that the weirdest stuff on this planet always comes from this godforsaken rock to the east. Whether it be video games, game shows, movies, or a Tojo torpedo. Now you gotta love it for that because I don't think anywhere else in the world would be able to create so much weird stuff so consistently. I feel like every piece of media I watch that comes from Japan either has some sort of nonsensical plot that's just ridiculous in every single way, or the visuals are so ridiculously wacky that you can't help loving it. So how does the gameplay work? Well, you're looking at it, so I'm pretty sure you can figure it out, but I'll tell you just in case. The game Gameplay is that you control your ball by tank controls, moving both joysticks forward moves you forward, or pressing I and W if you're on keyboard. Um, moving both of them sideways makes you go sideways, and moving one up and one down will make you turn. There's a few other moves, uh, like jumping, it just provides you a top-down view of what you're doing, so there's no real reason to jump. You can look around. Um, who cares? I mean, you don't need to look around. All you need to do is keep rolling and find more stuff to do. And you can quick dash, which is pretty useless in most levels, but gets kind of useful towards the late game when there's more spaced out stuff. The basic mechanics of the game are obviously that you collect smaller stuff so you can make your ball bigger to collect larger stuff until you're finally able to collect the fucking continents, because that makes sense. The music as well, kind of exactly what you would expect for a really weird fun game. Most of the tracks have that Japanese music thing where half of it is in English and half of it's in Japanese, so you're sitting there confused like, wait, was I supposed to understand that? What the fuck's going on? Though actually, this music was apparently very innovative for the time, as back in the PS2 days, they didn't use music with lyrics in them, no matter what language the lyrics were in. Uh, because it would interfere with the game. But since this game has no voice acting for this song to interfere with, they were able to come up with some pretty creative tracks. I'm not going to give you a history lesson of this game today, but I think you guys should read up on the entire game series as it's kind of really interesting. But the short version of it is that this one guy really didn't like the way that games were going because they were all turning into carbon copies of each other. I mean, think of all of the first-person shooters that came around uh, the time of the PS2 and PS3. Right. He was more of a square peg in the round hole guy and wanted to choose to make his own different games, so he went to go work for Namco and all of his projects got cancelled. So he decided to make his own project at Namco with some of the characters he created for the previous projects. With blackjack and hookers! This guy decided to oversee everything even though he was just a digital artist at the time, and to make the game nearly all of the assets were just created by some random kids that they pulled off the street and people that had free time at their jobs in the Namco offices. After a while, he got a publisher to give him a bunch of money to produce the game. After a while of having to choose the GameCube because of its more availability for developers, they finally got a deal with Sony to be on the PS2, which was the original console they planned for this to be on. Sony wanted them to release it a bit early for reasons that I don't fully understand. It was released at about half the cost of a regular PS2 game at the time, which really helped with its success. Though it never was officially released in Europe, it was released in America at a price of $20, which was significantly cheaper than any other first-hand AAA game out there. Since this guy really hated repetitive throwaway media, 
He didn't really want to make a sequel, but Namco pressured him into doing it. The sequel was even better than the first game in a lot of ways that I won't explain here, but then he stopped working on the project and the games went downhill fast. The franchise pretty much turned into a mobile exclusive, even before smartphones existed. The only good Katamari games that came out after the first two were just rehashes of the first two or were so similar to the first two that there's no reason in buying it if you already have the first two. Replayability is one of the biggest drawbacks to mostly single player games like this. There are a lot of single player games out there where it's more like you're buying a movie ticket than you're buying something that you can keep using for the rest of your life. I usually expect the games I play to be entertaining to me forever. I mean, obviously I'm not trying to hold it up to the standard like if I played this 24-7 every day for the next 10 years, would I be bored at the end of it? Of course I would. But I'm saying I should be able to come back to this game, you know, years down the road, play it again and not be bored because I already know what's going on. Older games on the PS2 sometimes don't really hit this mark for me. I've always came back to GTA 4 as it's kind of really fun even if you do have GTA 5 but I never really have the wants to go back to Vice City, which was my first GTA game. I think Katamari Damashi really hits this mark for me mainly because the gameplay is so simple. The story takes a back seat to the gameplay, of course, in a game like this. And due to the large levels, there's just a hundred different ways you could play through each one of them. And of course you have the versus mode, which adds a whole lot of replayability, though I do complain about how there's not that many maps. I do understand this game was made for the PS2, but I was just hoping that there would be a few more maps and maybe you'd be able to choose between them rather than just playing them in a random cycle. The multiplayer mode is kind of lacking. Even before I knew that this existed in the second game, I kind of expected the multiplayer to be the campaign, but you play one joystick at a time where your friend plays the other joystick and you play that joystick. I guess you could do this with one controller and just sitting right beside each other. But the versus mode seems very weird to me. It's not the focus of the game, so I won't talk about it too much, but basically my score for the versus mode is a 3 out of 10. It kind of disappoints, is the idea is really good, but if you, you know, maybe if it was on the maps from the campaign, or um, if they just did things a little bit differently, it would be better. The reason why I say that is because, well, um, playing these such, such small maps on such a low time limit, um, really what ends up happening is one person gets ahead really fast, they collect enough stuff, and then the, all they have to do for the rest of the game is keep crashing into the other guy and sucking them up and annoying the piss out of them until finally they give up and you win. If I was making the versus mode from scratch, I think I would have went from a completely different angle. I would have went through a hot seat sort of thing where you select a level, whoever gets the biggest Katamari by the end of the level wins, um, and you switch controllers so you don't both play at the same time. I think that this would be uh, easier on the system and also way fairer. I think the reason why the levels are so small is because the system can't handle two, two different regions being loaded in the same really big level, um, which is fair enough, but I, I think a hot seat would work much better than uh, this game mode as it just doesn't seem fair. Another advantage is that obviously you wouldn't need to have two controllers to play multiplayer well as right now you do. And obviously this is possible right now but there's no high score ranking system and I, I think that if they just uh, added a few uh, features they could have made a versus mode for basically no work at all and it would have uh, ended up being a lot better, I think. Though I don't know anybody who would complain about having a bad feature. I mean, you don't have to play versus mode if you don't want to. It was fun for the few times that I just invited my friend and we played together. Even though I don't ever really see myself returning to it as it didn't really excite me, I'm so glad it's there. The single player campaign is very enjoyable. Um, it has a high score system that you can challenge your friends to try to beat you in the level, which I mean, that, that's a, a really cool feature to the game. I, I like that very much. There's some different level types, but uh, they're all very samey. In the next game, there's a bunch of different ones that actually add on to it. Well, these level types do add stuff on to it. Um, it. The level types are basically get your ball to a certain size, and then um, you can keep rolling until the timer runs out, or uh, collect a certain amount of things 
until the timer runs out. So like collect 50 bears or something, and then you can collect, keep collecting bears until the timer runs out. Um, or one level where you have to collect one bear and then uh, the round is over, so you have to collect as much stuff before you ever hit one bear. The guy really wanted simplicity in the game, and I think they were working with limited resources and the PS2's limitations, so I really applaud them for being able to do what they did. The level types were diverse enough for me not to get frustrated with them, but what I was frustrated with at a certain point is how all the maps were the same. Um, there was like a couple different maps, there was really like only three or four different maps and you played different missions on those maps, which I don't inherently have a problem with, but I do have a problem with um, the end game not being diverse enough. You see, the thing is, is towards the end of the game, you have levels that usually last from 20 to 30 minutes. And I wouldn't have a problem with this uh, inherently either, but what I do have a problem with is having, you know, five levels in a row at the beginning of the game, all being like five, ten minutes each, all having the same level. That's okay. But I have a problem with 35 levels at the end of the game, all being on the same level, 30 minutes each. I'm playing hours on the same level. It's not very interesting to me. And I get it that they had some problems with, the, obviously, the PS2 and um, how much stuff they could actually put on the disc, but uh, there has to be some sort of... Even if they reused some of the levels from the beginning of the game, I would be perfectly fine with that, because the thing is, is um, you're playing the, like, the same level 50 times in a row at different sizes at the end of the game. I mean, especially since the levels get harder towards the end of the game, and more because I forgot to save one time, I had to replay a 30-minute mission, so it made me have to play it for another 30 minutes, and it, it, it just frustrated me. I mean, um, to have to play the same level over and over again, I feel like I'm just restarting the same thing over and over again, and it's kind of uh, annoying. I just wish there was more variety in, um, in the levels. Generally simpler games like this that are able to captivate me, um, get higher scores. Uh, Counter-Strike is basically my favorite game of all time, definitely my favorite FPS of all time. The most complex thing you can do in that game is change from burst fire to single fire on your Glock. Every other advanced thing in the game are just quirks of the engine or just strategies to game the engine. So I really do have a lot of respect for uh, simpler games like Counter-Strike and Katamari Damacy. Katamari Damacy uh, only really uses two inputs if you think about it. Katamari Damacy is definitely worth playing today. It's it's worth about 15 to 20 bucks if I'm being honest, but it frequently goes to $7 and $5 on sale on Steam. So go check it out, um, add it to your wish list, and wait for one of those sales and pick it up with some other games and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. Um, tell me what you think in the comments and uh, will you be buying this game? Will you be wishlisting it? Uh, all that kind of stuff. See ya.